So we all know a lot of physics just from living, even if we've never had a physics course. For instance, you're driving down the road, you're going 60. 60 what? Right, 60 miles an hour. V is 60 miles an hour. What does that mean? That means you move a distance of 60 miles, a distance, delta x, or a change in displacement, you move a distance of 60 miles every hour unit of time. So we know that speed is the change in distance over change in time, and if we were to do some calculus, your instantaneous speed, your instantaneous velocity, is the derivative of displacement. Your instantaneous velocity is the derivative of position. So let me ask you then, how far would I drive at this rate? How far would I drive in three hours? We say, all right, three hours, that would almost get me to San Francisco. Um, if I were going 60 miles every hour in three hours, I'd get three times as far or 180 miles. So I know I can take this formula and turn it around and say, oh yeah, delta x, my change in position, is going to equal the velocity times the change in time. And I wrote out, oh yeah, I'm going 60 miles per hour for three hours. I cancel the units, hours, and I wind up with 180 miles. Very good. But we're not going to use English units. We're going to use metric units. We're going to use meters, and we're going to use time seconds. The unit of velocity we're going to use is meter per second. What does that look like? Well, every second, every second you go about one meter. So that would be like one, two, three, four. That's about a meter per second. It turns out one meter per second is about 2.2 miles an hour. Be prepared to show me this is the case mathematically in class tomorrow. Okay, so um, how about other speeds? Like how fast can we run? Well then, if we could run, the fastest people can run about 10 meters per second. What does that mean? Like 10 meters per second. That means in one second you could run 10 meters, or uh, that's about 11 yards. So about, on a football field, the guy gets the ball, let's say, run as fast as he can, the fastest runner, you'd hear them say, and you can see he's running 10 meters every second, 30, 40, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, touchdown, right, or whatever. Um, so we have an idea of what these speeds are. So let me ask you a question. How about if, um, let's say I, I, I can't run 10 meters per second, I run at 5 meters per second, but I start at the 30 meter line, okay? Um, where will I be? If I start at the 30 meter line and I run at 5 meters per second, where will I be in 5 seconds? Okay, so if you got the 55 meters, what you know already is this formula, the displacement, my position now is equal to my initial position, right, plus the change in position. And the change in position is just equal to the speed times the time, right? And you said, oh yeah, um, you're moving at five meters per second for five seconds and you started on the 30 meter line, you cancel the seconds, 30 meters plus 25 meters is 55 meters. I love it. So, you see this example where I substituted the numbers with the units. I canceled the units and I wrote my answer with the units. I'm going to expect that on everything you hand in to me. You're going to carry out the units. Whenever there's a number, there better be a unit with it. 
Now, you don't have to put the numbers down. You can manipulate the formula with symbols as long as you like. But I have that requirement. Why? I thought about this because I'd like to think of myself as not so dictatorial. But there are three very good reasons, according to me, why you should carry your units all the time. One is you better have the right units in your answer. Um, so your answer makes sense. If, if this doesn't seem like it's necessary, Ask NASA about how one of their satellites smashed into the Mars atmosphere because someone recorded the thickness of the Mars atmosphere in the wrong units and they got mixed up. Probably cost several billion dollars after three years of building this, uh, after three years of building the satellite. My guess is someone got in pretty big trouble for that. Two, it will prevent you from making a mistake. It catches mistakes. Because what if you did something wrong with this formula? What if you had, oh, you accidentally wrote V over T, and then you find out your answer was, you say, oh yeah, it's one. It's one meter per second squared. And you're like, oh, wait, 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 no, that's an acceleration? No, 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 I'm looking for displacement. I did something wrong here. So I'll save your ass from time to time. The last, is it will teach you physics. So it will teach you physics. For instance, you're saying, oh yeah, uh, the velocity. Right, what was the velocity? It's, it's 10 meter seconds, I think. Wait, I better think about units here. Hold on. Uh, a velocity is change in displacement over change in time. So that would be, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I remember. I remember. So it will help you practice putting the formulas with the concepts, with the numbers. In any case, See you tomorrow.